There's a quote called the elephant in the rope. Everyone sees elephants in the circus? Have you been to the circus? Have you seen the circus? Mm -hmm. Okay, they got this huge elephant and they got a stick on the ground and they got a rope around it. And the elephant just goes, right? Back and forth. Why doesn't the elephant leave? It's restricted. Because when it was younger, it had spikes in the rope. So every time you pull the spikes, the rope went and it hurt. So as it grew, it got conditioned for that. The only reason the elephant will escape is how? Well, what's the only way this, the elephant will escape? And this actually has happened. If there's a fire and it gets startled, it'll pull the thing out and it'll run. And then it'll realize and then it'll go back to being a the circus again. A powerful example, but it's all about limiting beliefs. What we say to ourselves can hurt us. Mentally, and we don't even realize that we go on for years. And I was doing things for years, and that's where Terry's book and a few mentors that came around straightened me out a little bit. Said, Man, you were really good. I, and they said, Jim, you can write a book. Even before we were in the articles. Even before it. Like, what are you talking about? And now, uh, three books, and speaking all over Toronto. Who would have thought? Right? Because they saw it, and I, and I didn't. Okay? So, with healthy beliefs, is that, you know the word fear? What does fear stand for? False evidence appearing real. It, we all have fear, but it's not real. Here's an example. When I go, used to go to networking events, I used to be fearful of talking to people because I didn't know them. I couldn't relate to them. I was outgoing. I could talk about the soccer game, talk about football, talk about my work, but as far as what I was doing, I couldn't do it. Actually, I was flubbing my lines. I was like, what can I make it happen? I'll do this and this and this. As time passed, through my mentors, my coaching, I got better. And I had learned how to relate to people. So I can walk into a room and connect. So remember, get connected, make it happen, works together, you get a result. So what we have to realize this is that we have a fear of the phone. We have a fear of talking to people. We have a fear of approaching people. How do we overcome that? How do we do it? How do we, how do we overcome that? How do we do that? Anyone? We just do it. You just do it. Remember the Nike, Nike song, just do it? You gotta do it. And for myself, I've had a lot of experiences where I felt I already had the result planned out, like he's going to say that, or she's going to say that. I already had planned out. I'm going to say this, she's going to say that. You know what? It never happened. Never. Never. I told one of my friends, said, you actually think she's going to say no because she doesn't like your pants? Or no because they're... Kind of. Well, that's the last time I'm telling you. <laughs> and what it was is that I began my journey. And now when I look back at what I was when I do now, I'm like, it's complete nine day. But how I got out of it is I did it. And I put myself in a position where I, I challenged my limiting beliefs. I challenged what I thought what, what was not real. It took time, Terry's encouragement, and a lot of mentors, because they saw that I was good at it. They just I couldn't really control it. So what happened was I personally had to kind of settle down a little bit and to do it. And how this is done is simple. You just give yourself some simple steps. One step, two step, three step. For example, uh, when I go to an event, is I know where I'm going. Sometimes I know who's going to be there. Sometimes I know what they're talking about. I know the speaker. I know what's happening. So I'm already pre-engaged with the situation. Most of the time. Sometimes I'm not. Most of the times I am. So I'm already talking to a few people as it is. I've already got some targets already set up for myself I'm going to speak to. Last week, I knew two people were going to be there for sure. So I'm, I talked to them at the end of the night. But before I got to them, I had spoken to other people. That's where I got the momentum going. And I realized in sales, the same thing. Is that we think, Terry says, well, do you think the only time you get to prospect is between 7 and 7.30 on the phone? I used to say, yeah. Are you kidding me? 
out, you go to the gym, uh, you, you, you walk to, to, you know, you walk your walk there, you're not meeting people there, you're not meeting people there, I go, I am. You have a business card with you? Yes. Maybe use it? <laughs> like, okay. Because I was so conditioned, but I'm going to read my target market, it's 7, 7.30. Oh, this is awesome. But that was my living belief. So I spent all those times learning, and I only had half an hour of the week. I felt that I can talk to people. Wow. I was kind of narrow-minded, but that was a belief that I had set myself. But as time passed, I got confident, started talking to people, that window expanded, and it just became simpler. So the, the way to overcome that, it's called affirmations. Anybody know affirmations? Anyone? Anyone know about the secret? Anyone know about the secret? Anyone? Okay. So this is what I use. I still do affirmations every morning. I get up and do affirmations. And this is some of them. I say, look in the mirror. I say, I'm a professional business entrepreneur. I am a professional business entrepreneur. Just look in the mirror. Remember I said, tell you? This is what I do. You know, uh, I meet successful people every day. I attract leaders who want to become part of my business. Those type of things, I say. Uh, this business is easy for me. That's my favorite one. This business is easy for me. From the easy button, this business is easy for me. And when I did, I'm telling myself, I'm looking at myself, and I'm starting my day already. And I'm not getting biblical with you or motivational, but if you go back in time, affirmations actually were used for years and years and years <laughs> by many successful people, actually. Donald Trump, or <laughs> even Albert Einstein, and a few other brothers. From reading some of their, uh, other books. So, how you overcome that is you have to tell yourself. And it may seem a little challenging in the beginning, and it probably will be. So, this is where you start simple. Have a few of them. And say, okay, I'm going to do this. Okay, tonight, before bed, everybody's asleep. I'm going to do it. It's going to seem hard. But just do it. Trust me. You do, you sign yourself a, a cycle. You do this for 21 days. By the end of the seventh day, you're like, you believe in yourself. I do it. Because you need to give yourself belief. You don't care about the rest of the world, ladies and gentlemen. You want to you care about you. With who you are. Because you are amazing. And you need to tell yourself that. And this is what I'm going back with the emails. If they're telling me by email, I'm going to know they're telling this. And the universe listens to that. The more I tell the universe that I'm going to, I'm going to do 20 pay talks this year, that's my, my goal, 20, 20 pay talks, it's going to happen. People tell me, you're going to do it, Jim. I have four people tell me, you're going to do it, Jim. I'm like, thank you. I have two people tell me that. I'm, I'm very confident in telling people my goals. Because they're how most likely going to believe me because they see that how passionate I am about it. I've done four down, 16 more to go. Right? And I just got a couple of good leads this week. All because I did some videos on the weekend. Took them what? Now I'm going to do a couple of videos, and I'm going to say I got referrals in 24 hours. That was great. How does that happen? Thought about it, and did it with a few other, few other uh, coaching friends, a um, few other uh, off friends of mine did. Okay? Go forward with that. Do it. If you have any questions, you can ask. There's a great book called Who Moved My Cheese? Anybody heard of Who Moved My Cheese? Right here, too. Oh, you got the secret here. Here's the book right here. You got it. Secret. It's right here. Thank you. Who moved my cheese? Where I was just mentioning it. Oh. Sorry. Have I heard of the book? It's okay. Who moved my cheese? Have I heard of the book Who moved my cheese? Okay. There's these two mice. Right? And they finish the cheese. And they go, so where's the rest of the cheese? But they stand in the same spot thinking the cheese is going to come to them. But I'm not going to look for the cheese. I've read this book so many times. And every time I read it, it's a stinking stumpy. Stinking, stinking stumpy, that like Two mice. And it really is this. Four, four of them. Two of them are, I don't, two of them one place, two of them another. And what I realized is, is that we're like, um, oh, that was the, all, the opportunity that I had to speak with those people ended, and that's it? Oh, I'll get to meet them again? I get more of that? Or... You had some fun experience, or uh, you were having some good luck in some areas, and it stopped. They're like, is it going to be coming? Is it going to be more coming, coming to me? Is it more going to be coming to me? 
And then you realize, gosh, I gotta go look for it. And the story about the cheese is that they had to go look for the cheese. There's a venture out of their comfort zone to find cheese. And every time I read this book, it just means something different. The most other impactful statement I read is uh, this gentleman named Bob Davies. He uh, he's a, a um, he is a professional speaker, but he's done a lot of work explaining people getting over procrastination, limiting beliefs. And he has this example quickly about two, a mouse who had an easy access. It was like a V. So a mouse has e easy access to get the cheese on one side, and then the other side of the V, there's barbed wire on the bottom, and then there's cheese there. But if he goes over the wire, every time he uh, goes to, to the, uh, the cheese, he gets electrocuted by the wire. So it goes to the easy route to get the cheese. Okay? So it shows that if there's something there, we'll go the other way. And what he talked about was Anthony Robbins. What is Anthony Robbins? What's Anthony Robbins' famous thing for doing? Fire walking. Remember? Anthony Robbins is famous for his to get coals on the stage so make them walk over the coals. He's famous for that. And what happens? People are like, I can't do it! I can't do it! I see, go on, uh, you go on YouTube, there's, um, there's pictures and videos of, uh, of, of a lady doing it. She's like, petrified! It's like 20 something years old. I can't do it! I can't, I can't do it! Calms her down, she walks over the coals. She see her when she walks over the coals. Oh man, he's giving him a lottery! What did Anthony do in two minutes to make him walk over the coals? I know what he did. He says, not walking over the coals. He creates a story that's, uh, I found out later, he says, your son's on the other side of those coals. He, he sends a, a strong message that it's not the coals there, it's not there. There's no pain. And when she walks in, she's actually, when she's walking over the coals, she's smiling. She's like, she's like this, going over the coals. Because she's not even thinking about the coals. What is she thinking about? The end. And I think in life sometimes when we're facing challenges, it's not working, we're like, I'm not the coals, I'm going to get burned. But in the meantime, I don't, I know, say for example, my goal is uh, uh, to uh, get my own condo, get my own house. Well, I have a big enough down payment. I don't have the resources. Because I don't have time for me, you know, I don't have time to look over the listings. Oh, well, Jacob, you took a few steps. <laughs> Maybe you're not working the problem a little bit, right? And for me, it's been that. It's been looking at my schedule, seeing what I have available, where I can go to see some houses, where I can go see some showings, go on my own a little bit, and do it. And I have. It's just about event management. Back to Harry's book. And I have to remind myself too some about that. And this is where the mood is such an important thing. This is why the books you read, the people associate with such an important part. That article I read to you about the key factors, the third one was be around successful people. Be around successful people because you people want to encourage you. It's very, very important. Stop it.